Welcome to the Corporate Finance Institute. At CFI, we're on a mission to help you advance your career. We give you all the real-world training and tools you need to become a world-class financial analyst. This course on real estate financial modeling and evaluation will simulate the experience of being an investment analyst at a real estate development firm. We will build a model together in Excel step-by-step -step to evaluate the risk and return of investing in a real estate development project. Table of Contents Let's review what we're going to cover in this course. We're going to start with an introduction and provide you with my background as well as some important information about Excel modeling best practices. Then we're going to review the real estate industry. There are quite a few terms that we need to know and these are very important to have well defined as we build our financial model. In section 3 we're going to look at cap rates and net operating income. These are two very important metrics in the real estate industry and we'll work through some exercises on them together. In chapter 4 we're going to model a land loan. We'll see how much financing we can get to purchase a piece of property. In section 5 we'll look at modeling a construction loan. How much financing can we get for an actual development project on that land? In chapter 6 we're going to build a development model. This will be the most involved section. We're going to lay out all of the assumptions, we're going to look at things like absorption rates, capital costs, and then we're going to model the cash flow of this development project, which will lead us to the internal rate of return and the net present value of this development project. Once the model is built, we'll add an extra layer. In this layer, we're going to look at joint ventures and cash flow waterfalls. This will allow us to evaluate different internal rates of return for different investors. Finally, we'll create an output for this model. The output will summarize the investment opportunity and will create a document that we can share internally with stakeholders as well as externally with potential investors and lenders for this real estate development project. This is the completed real estate development model. You'll see here we have the cover page, then we have the deal summary sheet, and then we have the cash flow model with all of its various sections here. So starting with the cover page, we have links to the assumptions and the cash flow models for easy navigation. Within the deal summary section, we have all the important assumptions that we need. So we have the schedule, which lays out the timeline, the property stats, development costs, financing assumptions. Then we have the sales assumptions about how much the units are going to sell for. Finally, we're able to build a pro forma, which shows the economics of the project. We can summarize the profits, including the internal rate of return and return on equity. And finally, we'll have some sensitivity analysis that adjusts for sales price changes and construction cost changes. Then we've got the cash flow model. If we open up all sections of the cash flow model, we can see at the top there's a revenue buildup. This is where if I scroll over to the right, we start to have absorption of revenue as units are being sold. Then we have the development costs, which show the monthly expenses that are required to build the project. So we have all that contained here. Then we layer on the financing section. We have an interest rate, we start with an opening balance, and we make draws on the loan and repay it as cash flow becomes available later in the project here. And then we have our ending balance of the loan. After that, we're able to calculate the levered free cash flow of the project, and that results in our levered internal rate of return, 33%. After we've done that, we can then get into a cash flow waterfall. Cash flow waterfall is going to separate economics between GPs and LPs. So we're going to split the cash flow based on hurdle rates or tiers. Then we're going to calculate the cash flow in each of the three tiers. Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3. And then finally at the bottom we're going to have the internal rate of return of the limited partners, the general partners, and the overall project. We're also going to calculate the NPV of the limited partners, general partners, and the overall project as well. 
So as you can see by the end of this, what we will have created is a very well organized and laid out real estate development model that clearly shows a summary of the transaction here with all of our assumptions clearly laid out and then a monthly cash flow model that goes from absorption all the way down to internal rate of return by investor type. Session objectives. In taking this course, we wanted to enable you to do several things. The first is follow the best practices of capital structure modeling in Excel. That means we need to carefully model the debt, the equity, and other components of the capital stack in a very logical and easy to follow manner. The second thing is we want to outline the hallmarks of a good financial model. What are the best practices? What are the industry tips and tricks that you should follow? Thirdly, we want to explain the importance of a clearly identified input section or assumption section in a model. This is critical and will really make your model stand out from other analysts. If you're able to make it easy for others to make changes in your model by having all your assumptions in one place, your model will really stand out. We're also going to explain how project finance is funded. There are several tools that you can use to fund project finance, and we're going to look at the difference between project finance and corporate finance. Why is it that we have project finance as its own separate category? Finally, we're going to talk about the development timeline for real estate and the corresponding financing tools that are available at different stages of real estate development.